Howdy you two, Bunky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to be doing part two of our, of our XCP-NG series of videos. Let's just call it Zen Server from now on, okay? It's the XCP version of Zen Server, but you, you know what I mean. Anyway, today what I want to do is I want to try and convert. You know, you know I have my Windows 10 or Windows Lab set up all around Windows. I, I, in fact, let me show you what I'm talking about. This is my uh, MCS production machine, and, and I have a couple of 2016 servers in here. They're domain controllers, and I've got a Windows Server Update Service uh, server, and then I have all these workstations in here, these Windows 10 Pro units, one through eight, uh, and then I have uh, some Windows 7 units, like 1 through 5, that have already been configured for Hyper-V. And what I want to do is convert them over to, uh, to Zen Server. So that's what this video is going to be about today. Alright, so this conversion over from Hyper-V to, uh, let's just call it Zen Server, is not a trivial process. So I'm going to show you what I have to do. To convert a machine. Now I've already done a, a Windows 7 machine, so it's very similar. I'm going to attempt to do a Windows 10 machine. Now what I need to do is go over to my production unit first and uh, see what kind of controller my production unit uh, has for my Windows 10 machine. So let's go over there first and take a look see. Oh, I already got Hyper-V Manager up and running. I forgot I was already logged into a session. So I've already converted this Windows 7 Ultimate Lab 1 machine, but what I want to do is conv I want to convert one of these machines. So I'm going to right-click and go under Settings, and I'm going to look, and right now it says it's got a SCSI, SCSI controller and a uh, SCSI hard drive, or it's got a hard drive, virtual hard drive, connected to a SCSI controller. And the reason I check that is because the tool I'm going to use is right here. It's called a Starwin uh, V2V Image Converter. Now, this is what I'm using for this, this video. I, I know there are other tools out there you can use. Well, supposedly, this is the one I've used. So, my source image is on a Hyper-V server. And that would be MCS Production. Now... For whatever reason, the first time I try to log in, it's going to give me an error and say that I'm not authorized. And there it is. And then all I have to do is enter my password again. Because the first time this happened, I thought I'd entered the wrong password. And for some reason, it connects. Now, I believe these Windows 10 machines are on the P drive on that, uh, on that MCS production. We're about to find out. Yeah, there's Windows 10 Lab. Uh, actually, this one's probably on the L drive, which is a uh, iSCSI. So let's go look over here. Yeah, look, Windows 10 uh, Pro 64 Lab 1. So that's the image we want right there. Now, what I'm going to do is just convert it to a VMware growable image. Uh, you know, I, I wonder if I could... Uh, Re, I, I could convert it down. Interesting. Anyway, I'm going to do a VMware growable image. Click on next. And supposedly this is a SCSI disk. Now, I'm not going to activate Windows repair mode because I don't have that option. You see it's grayed out here. I'm just going to click on next. Now, it's going to by default, it's going to put it on the C drive, but I have created a folder on the D drive. So I'm going to copy that name. And you can see it's going to need 55 gig to convert it. So I'm going to click on Browse here. And I'm going to go to the D drive. And I'm going to come down here to VM Conversion. And just leave that name W10P64Lab1. Click on Save. And go ahead and click on Next. <clears throat> now this is going to take some time to convert. And then it has to be then imported into, uh, uh, into Zen uh to then be converted again. I know it's a, it's not a trivial process. It takes a lot of steps, but I want to take you along with me, and uh, we're going to see if this works. I did successfully do this to a, a Windows 7 image, 
but uh, <coughs> Windows 10 is a little bit different. It uses VH, VHDX or VHDXD file or whatever. So we'll uh, we'll come back when that's done and see if it actually converts and if I can import it into uh, into Zen server. All right. So as you can see here, I started at 10:51 and the convert was completed at 11:20 and 40 seconds so it took about what 30 minutes to convert an image not too too bad but keep in mind i have about 15 more of these to do so uh you know it's going to take a little bit of time to convert these uh units over to run on uh on zen so i'm going to go ahead and click on finish here all right so i'm over here at the xcpng center and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do a file and I'm going to import. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to browse to that file that I converted. So I'll browse and here's my Win 10 Pro 64 Lab 1. I'm going to go ahead and open that. Click on Next. I'm going to go ahead and give it the uh, same name as I had under uh, Hyper-V. I'm going to give it... Uh, I'm going to give it... 2 gig of RAM. I'll come back later and give it some more virtual CPUs. Right now I just want to get it converted. Uh, the location I want to import it to is xcpng-lab. I'm going to go ahead and put it on my uh, one terabyte SSD drive so we'll have some fast storage for it. I'm also going to add it to my VLAN network of 20. Uh, I create a separate VLAN network so I uh, click on next. I'm not going to use the operating system fix up. I don't have the ISO for that. And from what I've read online, it, it's really not any good. It's an old tool. So uh, now I could be wrong on that. But from what I've read is uh, you're better off not using it. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. And it's asking me what network I want to use to transfer the VM with. And I'm going to just have it use uh, network zero, the management LAN, and automatically use uh, uh, DHCP. So we'll click on next and then we'll click on finish. And if you look down here, you'll see it's converting, connecting and converting the image. If we come here to notifications and events, I can click the little arrow and it tells me uh, what it's doing for the conversion. So we'll let this conversion run. Again, I told you it had to do two conversions. So we'll let this one complete and then I'll come back when that's done. All right, so here we are back at uh, XCP, uh, XCP Center, we'll call it, and you see the import was successful. It completed, it took 49 minutes and 17 seconds. That's a lot longer than I expected. Um, so let's go back and see if we've got the machine here now. And we do. There's Windows 10 Pro 64 Lab 1. So let's go to the console. I'm going to go ahead and try to start it, and we'll see what kind of result we get here. And as you can see, this is the same problem I had when I tried to convert a uh, virtual machine over uh, from uh, Windows Server 2016. So I think it has something to do, even though it says boot, dot, boot device hard disk success, uh, it does not come up and boot. And it tells me it's going to power off the device in 30 seconds. So I think we can safely say that is a fail. Now, based on the amount of time it took to import this virtual machine, uh, it is probably uh, probably would behoove me to just go ahead and create a uh, a whole bunch of new virtual machines uh, and clone them, do a uh, sysprep on them and clone them and create a new lab out of that rather than trying to convert what I have, and then keep those other virtual machines I have for uh, a lab on on Hyper V. But I just wanted you to see this. Uh, it is a little tricky, and it's probably just a step I'm missing. Uh, maybe somebody can uh, figure it out. Give me a comment in the comment section that says what I'm missing. I'll go ahead and keep that virtual machine here that I converted, even though it's not successful, so that uh, later we could uh, possibly uh, try it again. But uh, there are the results of my uh, conversion of a Windows 10 unit, and I got the same results with a Windows Server 2016. So there you go. Not a not a real spectacular failure um, look so here's what I've decided I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and uh, convert all my Windows 7 lab units over because I know they'll work and then what I'll do is create a new Windows 10 lab unit 
and I will then sysprep it and use the clone procedure under Zen server to make a clone of that image as many as I need. And so what I'm going to do is end up setting up that Windows uh, lab from scratch, uh, which is, you know, it's no big deal. It's good training for me. And it'll uh, allow, me, allow me to do some more videos using Zen server, so it's a win-win. So hopefully you'll be looking forward to those videos. Let me be clear on something else. I am not totally replacing my infrastructure with Zen right now. I've got it on that IBM server, which is why I got that IBM server. It's my playground server, so to speak. Where Zen is going to be a good fit for me is for those clients that want to do virtualization but don't want to have to, to purchase a, a server operating system to get the virtualization. And yes, Windows does make uh, Hyper-V a free version of it, but it's a little clunky to use. I would rather use uh, Zen Server XC or XCP. And um, the only thing you really need to pay for on Zen Server is support, uh, unless there's a way to contribute to the open source community on Zen, which, which we're willing to do. I always encourage my clients to make uh, a contribution to the open source development community whenever they use open source products. So... But this is me slowly moving away from, uh, from you know, what I what I consider enterprise level software and hardware, uh, and and providing my customers in the SMB space with something a little more affordable yet powerful. So, again, we're not replacing the complete infrastructure in MCS yet. We're working towards that goal, because if I'm able to do it in my business and run it then I should be able to do that for other clients as well. So that's the reason I'm, I'm looking at Zen and playing around with it. So I would encourage those of you that want to come along or play around in Zen server, get yourself a, uh, a server if you have one laying around or buy a cheap one off of eBay like I did. Get it up and running and tell me what you think of it. So we're going to continue on in this series of videos. I'm going to take you with me on my trials and tribulations of converting things over to Zen. And I'll point out any uh, weaknesses in the operating system. I haven't found, knock wood, any bugs yet, but I haven't put it through its paces like some of you will. So keep that in mind. But anyway, we hope you found this video entertaining and informative. As always, please give us a thumbs, thumbs up down below. Leave your comments in the comment section. Uh, and uh, donate if you're so inclined. We take PayPal and Patreon. And uh, I guess we'll see you in the next video. So don't forget, we will see you on the other side.